Welcome to Season 3, Episode 5 of Fit Pro Sessions, your bi-weekly essential nutrient to progress as a fit pro. Today's vitamin PC is B Obsessive. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Hayley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work and that with the right structure, support and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching. So today's vitamin PC is from the late and great Kobe Bryant, who was a NBA basketball player and spent his entire career with the Los Angeles Lakers. And the quote was, be obsessive. Be obsessive. The thing about Kobe Bryant be is Be obsessive. Whenever you be think, obsessive. <laughs> whenever you think about him is his drive for success and how yeah. successful he was. So if you think about that level of success, the amount of, I'm not very good with basketball, but the amount of wins there were, the amount of success, the amount of, um, sort of benefits throughout all of his life. I mean, life. there's been a lot of, of famous basketball players, but Kobe Bryant just dominated the scene yeah. everything about how kobe bryant operated on the court off the court his embodiment of his own role model how he inspired millions how he inspired other players his technique his own like idiosyncrasies that idiosyncrasies. idiosyncrasies get the word out everything about him was just outrageously amazing and you know what an absolute loss at the beginning of this year when he was yeah. uh when he when he passed away now so uh, what i love of... is that when we do extract something from someone that's been really successful yeah is that you know that their mindset must have been in such a place to be able to I achieve mean, that this is a kobe bryant um uh, quote but tony robbins said success leaves clues mm. OK, now he, he left a serious amount of clues to get to be uh, who he was, to, to be successful. And I loved he had a um, he had an interview. I can't remember who interviewed him, but one of the things that came from this interview was a quote that said, be obsessive. Now, he was asked in this interview, what do you mean by be obsessive? And he said, you know, when everyone else is on holiday, I was practicing. When everybody else was sleeping, I would get up earlier. In one, one point of his interview, he said, I used to get up at four o'clock and the average NBA basketball player would get up at six o'clock. So he said for five hours every, uh, sorry, five days every week, I would get an additional two hours every day of practice, which was 10 hours a week. Mm. Now, they the other players didn't do that on Saturday, Sunday. And he said, I did. So he got 14 hours every week of extra practice oh, wow. okay that's it. so that's that's a huge amount across uh, a week that's 14 hours two weeks that's 28 hours no across the mouth, month please. <laughs> across the month that's 56 hours yeah. of extra practice and he said to you've got to be obsessive if you want to win if you want to get ahead if you want to be the best if you want to go out and set a new standard you've got to become obsessive so he said other people would let their nutrition slip on certain days and have a cheat meal. I wouldn't do it. I'd be obsessive. Mm -hmm. And he said he went through a list of so many areas of his life where he recognized what other great players were doing. And he became obsessive by just one extra degree. And again, I'm going to bring back the Tony Robbins quote. He says, you know, if I take off in a plane in London and I aim for New York, but I change my course by one degree, I land in Miami. And this is what Kobe Bryant meant. I can look around the field, look around the court, and there's other great players, phenomenal in their own right, but I just wanted to be one degree of a better standard. Ooh, nice. And across the week, across the month, across the year, and across his career, he became outstanding because everybody else was playing a, a, an incredible high level of course still. yeah yet he was able to push the boundaries by being obsessive but by just one degree amazing okay and that's the inquiry no, today is where can you become obsessive inside your world inside your training inside your studies inside your lap your exam your revision your practical kickstarting as a fitness uh, fit pro kickstarting as a business getting clients getting found 
And I think obsession of being obsessive always gets a negative tone. I, oh, yes. God, you're so obsessive about it. Just leave it. You're so obsessed with it. Just leave it alone. But actually, that's because generally people aren't obsessed over one thing or something. Yeah. They have a, a nature whereby it's like a part-time hobby. Yeah. It's, like, it's okay to just sort of yeah. um, dibble and dabble around with things. Don't be a dabbler. <laughs> Don't be a dabbler. Um, instead, be obsessive and master it. Yeah. Um, but I think it's often seen as a bad thing. Yes. Um, to be obsessed on something almost like it's negative and it's not going to benefit you. But what Kobe Bryant's saying is that that was one of the secrets to his success. Yes, and he wasn't obsessive to a point where it was it was detrimental to his health. It wasn't detrimental to his well-being. It wasn't detrimental to his fitness, his spirituality, his relationships, his his his, just his obsessed family. On the beneficial stuff, right? He was obsessed with the habit, the daily practices, the discipline of being an ounce better so if you've listened to previous episodes of uh it's like season it's, organized, it's like it's organized we talked about the ripple effect okay majoring in minor things kobe bryant majored in major things mm. okay he focused on creating the biggest ripple yeah we talked about in a previous one about the the regret and weighing ounces and weighing tons yeah, so he discipline. focused on the ounces which is just one degree better Okay, we he didn't also focus about planting, on tons. Planting the tree now, which was the Zig Ziglar quote right at the very beginning. Completely. So it's that being obsessed on going, I'm just watering that tree. I'm just watering, watering that, that tree. Seed. Yes. Like literally just doing the things you need to do to get the outcome. Completely. You don't have to worry about the other stuff. So but what does this quote kind of mean to you? I think it's it really does give me goosebumps as I sit here and think about how we've developed um Everything in our world, to be honest, mm. as a couple, as as a married couple, as a business, as uh, as a life that we've created. And I'm going to say over the last, I'm going to say more so four to five years, we've become obsessed in a number of areas mm. that have been, had a huge ripple effect in our world, but haven't, hasn't been detrimental to our health, well-being, our mindset, our spirituality. And we've checked it regularly to make yeah. sure that actually, is this thing we're being obsessive about right now, yeah. is that helping us get towards our end outcome of being obsessed on that outcome? Because you could be obsessive or in minor it starting, things. <laughs> it's starting to take us off track yes. um, in other ways, which we don't want. So it's about reviewing that because you might find the thing you're obsessed about, you actually need to shift slightly. I think along that route personally as well, and maybe, you know, we've never met Kobe Bryant, but maybe other people have felt the same. Maybe you've felt the same is when you do start to become a little bit obsessed by mastering one thing, people on the outside looking <laughs> in start to question you. And that's what I found. Mm -hmm. So to start off with, they questioned why um, we would spend so much time doing a certain thing. Let's take our running, for example. They yeah. questioned why we would go out for multiple runs per week why we would strict, um, on our food. strict on our food why we would ditch certain say family meetups or family occasions why we push pace why we put like they just ask why and it wasn't until several weeks and months in they'd be like how are you doing all of this how are you managing to get that like really well done that's a great result you Haley won a marathon uh you know came first lady like how like but to start off with they ask you why and i think when you become obsessive I think from my experience, other people question you and that's when you start to question yourself. Is this where I want to be focusing? Do, should I be doing this? Like, is this obsession um, healthy for me? And really, it's it's because you're listening to the noise of others, I'm going to say, mm. to start off with, as opposed to going, I really want this. I know why I want it. I know why I want it, I know when I want it by, and did I say I know why I want this? <laughs> okay. I know why I want it. And the impact that's going to have on me. So maybe that's one of the first inquiry questions for you. What are you heading towards and do you know why you want it and are you obsessing over it enough? Yes, and just because other people might put yeah. you down for you being obsessive about that thing yeah. or obsessed on achieving an outcome, doesn't or are asking you like why are you doing this why are you doing this that is weird yeah um, if they just because they think that it doesn't mean that it is a bad thing that of what you're doing review that and actually go well, actually maybe they don't like it and they see it's bad because they're just not there yet no or maybe because they're not that, focused on one that's, thing yeah or maybe that's not their obsession that's not a reflection of their world so they just don't understand it whatever somebody else says is just a mirror of what they're internally thinking mm. So if they say it's bad, it's because they see it's bad and maybe that's okay. It's nothing to do with 
them or you. Because <laughs> if respect. Kobe Bryant had listened to everybody that said, why are you doing that extra training practice? Why are you getting up at four o'clock and he listened to them? He'd become the average of all of the other people. Now, being obsessive means that you want to be outstanding. And to be outstanding, you've got to stand out. Ooh. Okay. To be outstanding, you've got to stand out. You've got to stand out from a crowd. If a crowd are all doing one thing and not obsessing, you've got to be obsessive. Okay. Uh, and go from there. Absolutely. I so, think that's actually, it's a short quote. It's and a I short think quote. We've absolutely. So where in your world are you, uh, do you want to be obsessive? What is it you want? What is, do you know why you want it? Where in your world do you need to be more obsessive? Maybe that's inside your revision, completing your LAP, getting your exam results, booking your exams, becoming a fit pro, getting more clients, getting found. What outcome are you obsessed to achieve? What outcome are you obsessed to achieve? And uh, who do you need to become? And what do you need to do in order to become obsessed? Do you need to get up an extra hour earlier? Do you need to um, schedule more time for yourself? Do you need to be a bit more selfish to be a bit uh, to be a bit more selfless? Do you need to what tasks do you need to do throughout your day to become obsessed with your outcome? I love that. There we go. Vitamin PC, episode number five. Episode number five is done. There we go. So we will see you bright and breezy on episode number six. And if you've enjoyed this one, please comment, like, and share. Drop and us drop a five-star review. review inside iTunes. Outside of that, we will love you and leave you and see you on the next episode. And remember, it's be time obsessive. to be obsessive. See you later. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Hayley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity, and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work and that with the right structure, support and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching.